What's going on guys? In this tutorial I'll be walking you through how to use the acrylic painting Photoshop effect. So this is a free Photoshop action you can download from the link in the description. And what this action does is automatically transform your photos or images into paintings. So this example you see here was created using the Photoshop action with just one click. So I'll show you a few more examples of the effect. You can also check out the link below. I've got more examples of the effect you can take a look at. Uh, and then we'll head into Photoshop and I'll show you how it all works. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I have the photo open that I'll use for this tutorial. Now, the first thing we need to do is load the Photoshop action that was included with the download. So to do that, you wanna to go to the window menu, select actions. So this is actions panel, it'll pop up here somewhere to the right. And you wanna click on this little drop down menu icon here, click on that and select load actions. And now we get to where you downloaded the acrylic painting Photoshop effects by seven style zip file. And inside the zip file, you'll see this .atn file. So you want to double click on that and then it will appear inside the actions panel here. Now I'll just minimize the actions panel for a moment because the next thing we need to load is the Photoshop brushes that were included in the download. So if you just hit B or click on the brush tool icon here and then right click anywhere over your image, that will bring up the brushes panel. So from here, you want to click on this icon and select import brushes and then navigate to the folder that's called brushes must be loaded into Photoshop. Go inside there and the brushes file will be here, the .avr file. So double click on that and then the brushes will appear inside this folder here. Now another way to quickly load the brushes, if I just uh, delete this group and if I just bring up the window where I uh, downloaded the action, you can go inside the brushes folder here and just double click on the AVR file and then that will load into Photoshop. So if I uh, right click now, bring up the brushes panel, you'll see the folder is back inside this folder, uh, inside the brushes panel. So the same applies with loading the Photoshop action. You can just navigate to uh, the action file here, double click on that and then it will appear inside here. So creating the effect is very simple. All you need to do is go inside the folder here. You want to select the create painting action here and click the play button. Uh, but before we click play, I'll just uh, mention a few things here. Firstly, I've just got a note here saying, uh, don't play any action below here. All of these actions that you see stacked down here are the workings of the action. So don't rename any of those. You don't need to play them. Secondly, you can't rename this folder here. If you rename this folder, the action won't work at all. So it's important to keep that uh, as is. These actions here, we I'll go through these one by one after the actions, the main actions finished. These are for running, these are for creating additional effects, things after the main action is finished. So, okay, so we just select the create painting action here. We could play. And when we do, we just get a little reminder message here to check uh, your image dimensions. In the next pop-up window, consider the size of your image. I recommend using images that are 3000 pixels to 4000 at the long dimension. So what you want to do here is just click continue and you just get the image size window pop up. So this is just a reminder to double check the size of your image. I recommend, yeah, taking the long dimension, whether it's the width or the, or the height and scaling that to anywhere between three to 4000 pixels. So for example, if you open up your image and it's only say 1000 pixels wide, take that number and increase it to say 3,500, anywhere between three and 4,000 is good. Uh, you can of course go larger than 4,000, uh, except the action will just take longer to play back. So for this example, I'll use, I'll use it around 4,000 pixels and at 4,000 pixels, it'll take around 10 minutes to complete the action has to create thousands of individual paint strokes. So it's quite a um, quite a long process to do that. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. So when you've done that, all you need to do is click OK. And from there, the action will complete. And like I said, it takes around 10 minutes. So uh, you don't need to just sit here and look at Photoshop. You can go off and do other things and come back and then check your result. Uh, but I will fast forward the video now and get to the result and we'll go through all the layers. Okay, here is the result. Now I'll come back to these actions in a few moments 
So what I'll do now is just uh, hide the actions panel. To do that, just click this icon here, put that aside. And what we'll do, we will go through all these layers one by one. I'll put time codes down in the description below if you wanna to jump to a particular topic. So what I'm gonna do first is just collapse these folders here. So hold down Control Alt or Command Option and just click on any one of these arrows. That'll quickly collapse those. Now what we'll do, we'll just hide all of these and we'll start off at the bottom and I'll talk to you about how I structured this. So just got a better understanding of how it's all working. So firstly, we have the original image here, okay? So if you want to run the action again, you want to just shift select all of these and hit delete, and then you can just run the action again. Every time you run this action, your result will be different. So you can just experiment with um, running it again and see what kind of result we get comparing the two. This one here will make more sense when I get to this folder, the back in image. So you can see if I turn that one on, that just has like a subtle painterly effect applied to it. Uh, so let's go inside this folder here. Uh, this one is called brush strokes and I've got a bracket here, reorder layers. So I'll just turn this one on and we'll go inside here and let's turn all these off and we'll go through these one by one. So actually what do I do? I might hide these so these are a bit clearer to see. So down the bottom here, uh, this is just a simple layer, just dab, uh, dab brush strokes. So they're just a random little blobs of paint. Uh, that you can move around or duplicate, move up and down the layer order here. This one here, messy uh, brush strokes. Okay, so that's that look there. Uh, now we have these four layers here in yellow. Now these are the large brush strokes. So if I turn these on one by one, you can see how that starts to fill in a lot of the gaps with larger brush strokes. So if I turn these ones off here, you can see, see these clearer. Okay, uh, now these ones here, the random, random direction strokes one and two. So those are just uh, like the cold random direction strokes. They shoot off in all sorts of directions, kind of creates a bit more of an abstract look to the painting. So that's those. And we have the three layers here in blue. Now these are the smallest brush strokes. So if I turn this one on here, these ones really do a lot of the detail work in your painting. So if I turn the three on here, you can kind of make out what you're looking at just with these three layers enabled. You can see quite a lot of definition where the large brush strokes kind of just fill in areas that don't have much definition with larger brush strokes. Okay, you got the random ones in here. And the other layers here in purple, uh, I've titled those medium brush strokes one and two. So if you turn these two, well, these two on, these kind of uh, halfway between the small and large uh, in size of the brushes. So turn on the large again, you can see that's filled in most of that area. I'll turn these two off and that almost fills everything. But that's where these two layers down the bottom here come in. So you've got the messy brush strokes, so I turn that on. That kind of fills in uh, a lot more. And then you've got the dab brush strokes, that'll fill in any remaining areas. And the backing image is just in case there are details, you can see that working there. So there might be instances when you run the action where it hasn't entirely filled in every bit of your image with paint strokes. So wherever it has missed, it falls down onto the backing image, uh, the backing image here, which has that subtle painted look to it. So um, yeah, that's an overview of these layers here and how they're all how they all work. Now, the reason why I've called this folder here brush strokes reorder layers is because when you do reorder the layers, it creates uh, a different look to your painting. So for example, if I just take the small brush strokes three here, high definition, move this to the top, undo and redo, you can see how that is affecting your result. Or maybe you want to grab the medium brush strokes, drag that to the top, so you can see how that changes the look. And we can also control where these layers appear and don't appear by using the masks. So for example, let's just say I want to duplicate this layer here. I want to uh, hold down Alt or Option and I'll drag this to the top because I kind of like the look of this, but I only want these medium brush strokes to appear, let's say around this area here. So what I can do is if I select the mask here and if I hit Control or Command I, 
that will invert from white to black, which is basically then hiding the layer altogether. So anywhere that you brush white onto the mask, that will reveal the layer. If it's black, it will hide the layer. So I've just hidden everything. So what I want to do now is if you hit B, that'll grab the brush tool. If you right click, that'll get the brush panel open. If you navigate to the acrylic painting Photoshop effect brushes fold here, twirl that open. This uh, brush here, I've created for you to use as like a mask brush. Okay, so you can select that on there. Okay, now if you select the mask here, and you can use the left and right square brackets to adjust the size of the brush. I want to just reveal this medium brush strokes around this section. So I want to make sure that white is my active color. So just click there, make sure white is selected. And if I start brushing here now, you can see that those medium brush, those medium brush strokes are coming on here. Okay. So if I move this layer around, you can see that's the area that I revealed. Now, a little something that I like to do is if I were to preview, so now I've kind of forgotten what the medium brush strokes look like, say in uh, this area here, and I want to be able to preview that again. So what I would do is if you just hold down shift, and if you click on the mask, that temporarily disables it. So now I can get a, a snapshot again of how the medium brush strokes looks over the entire painting. So then when you click on it again, it kind of releases the mask and we're back to the area that we just uh, revealed. So let's just say that I like what this layer is doing over this side here. I would disable the mask, hit B, grab that brush tool again, and white is my active color, and I brush that over here. Or let's just say I change my mind, I want to um, hide that again, I would then select black. So now when we brush black onto the mask, it will hide it. So now it's hiding it. Okay. Now another quick example of how you might want to use this masking technique is let's just say I'll grab one of these large brushes here and let's just make a copy of this. So we'll hold down Alt or Option and drag to the top. That makes a copy. Now what I want to do is add some like large swirling brush strokes down the bottom here. So you can see the before and after when I brought this one to the top. But I, I don't want them to appear anywhere else. I just want them to appear down here. So I'm just going to select the mask, Control or Command I. That'll flip from white to black. And I'm going to grab the brush tool, B, select the mask brush. Make sure white is my active color. You can hit uh, D to reset the brush colors here. And then X will flip between black and white. So white, because I want to reveal. And now when I start brushing, I can start revealing some of these larger brush strokes down the bottom here. The next folder I'm going to jump to is the paint stroke definition folder at the top here. So this is an important folder. This one, if I turn this one on, uh, this adds a lot of definition to your paint strokes and also adds these white edge highlights, which kind of makes uh, all the details pop a bit more uh, in your image. So let's go inside this folder here and take a look what's going on. I'll turn them all off uh, and we'll go through them one by one. So the paint texture one down the bottom here, I've got paint texture in brackets opacity. So whenever you see a layout where I've uh, got in brackets here opacity, I am just reminding you to uh, experiment with the layer through its opacity. So you can see at the top here, the opacity of this layer is 7%. So this particular layer, if I zoom in here, okay, and let's go to say this section. If I increase this opacity, I'll exaggerate this and just bring it to 100%, 0, 100. So you can see that, that is adding some overall texture. So by default, it is set to 7%. So if I zoom out here and we'll drag it to 100, you'll probably see it a bit better. So you can see that there. So you don't need to have any texture. You can turn the uh, layer off or just set the opacity to zero. What I like to do when I'm changing uh, when I'm changing the opacity of a layer is I'll just click on the word opacity here, click and hold and drag to the left and right. And while I'm dragging, I will look at the painting to the left there and sort of get it to an area that I think looks good. But we'll just keep this pretty low and move on up here. So the next one is color variation opacity. So if I turn this one on, this is a very subtle effect. I've got the opacity by default set to 10%. Let's again exaggerate this, let's drag, drag it to 100%. So what that does is it creates sort of some color division between uh, different paint strokes. And you want to use this just a very subtle amount. So I'll bring this back to zero. As I, as I increase it, if you look up the top here, as I increase it, 
can see how it's the paint strokes start to separate in color a bit. So it's just a handy little layer that, you know, it's a one percenter, it adds a bit to the overall effect. Um, so experiment with that one. These two, uh, you definitely want to play around with. So you've got paint shadow definition and paint highlight definition. So I'll turn these two on. So you can see just when I turn them on, how it sort of makes the paint strokes pop a bit more. Now by default, the opacity of these are very low. Uh, again, I'll just drag, this is start off with the shadow one. I'll drag this to 100% so you can see what's going on here. So you can see between uh, different paint strokes, it's got like this, uh, this shadow detail. And if I drag this back to 0%, as I increase the opacity, you can see how it starts to, again, create more division between paint strokes. You don't need to use this layer. It's there if you just want to uh, bring out those paint strokes a bit more. And the same applies here with the highlights. So let's drag this to 100%. So there's the highlights. Let's take it back to zero and I'll start increasing it. So you can see that there. So when you're using both together, uh, you can see what kind of effect it creates. What I like to do sometimes is I'll just shift select these layers and then I'll drag the opacity to zero and I'll see if I like that and I'll slowly increase it. It's very uh, reactive this layer so you only need to use a very small percentage of it to have quite a significant effect on the look of your painting. So use those, uh, play around with those, see what kind of results uh, you get. This one here, Paint edge highlights, I've got in brackets wide. So if I turn this one on, so you can see that that adds some pretty prominent edge highlights uh, around your painting. Now if I just move this layer around, you can see what it is. They are, just to zoom in, they're little sort of paint swipes and most of them are, it's primarily white and it will only apply really around the edges where there's detail uh, in your subject. So you can see up around the top here, there's no detail. Uh, it won't add it. Uh, and But all around here, there's a lot of edge detail, so it will apply it. So by default, the opacity of this one's up high, 80%. You can drag this one down. So there's zero, and you can start increasing it to bring out more edge detail. These ones here are very subtle, but you definitely want to play around with them. So let's just zoom in here. Let's take a look. So this top one, uh, paint edge highlights thin. If I turn this to 100%, it adds like these little edge highlights around uh, the paint strokes. So it's a very subtle effect, uh, not when you use it at 100%, but you can sort of just use a little bit of it and it just adds just a little bit more detail to the painting. Um, so it brings back to zero and then as I start increasing it, you can see some of those little edge highlights appearing. Similar to the layer below, uh, this one isn't as prominent. Uh, let's zoom in here, see if we can, so 0%. Yeah, it's very subtle, this one, uh, but it does add oat to the overall effect. So definitely play around with those two. Now, there's something very important to note about this folder here, is that if you are reshuffling these layers around, okay, you actually want to delete this folder here and open up the actions panel and this slide, this action here recreate the paint stroke definition folder you want to run that one so the way this works is that the paint stroke definition folder basically uh, all the layers within it they take a snapshot at the current arrangement of your uh, brush strokes it then applies um, textures and you know the shadow definition the highlight definition based on your current arrangement of brush strokes so uh, let's say, I'll just delete this for a moment. And let's just say I want to experiment with reshuffling these layers around. I might just drag uh, this one to the top. Okay, maybe I prefer that arrangement. So what you want to do is, yeah, you want to delete that top purple folder and then select this, fo uh, this action here and then click play. And basically what this will do, this will then uh, look at your current arrangement of textures and your, of paint strokes and it will recreate your uh, paint stroke definition folder. So that's just appearing here. Okay. So you can see how that has now um, reapplied all the relevant sort of highlights and shadow detail based on your current arrangement. So this, this folder will also always be created uh, 
at the top of the layer panel, uh, the top of the visible layers. So if all these layers here were turned on, okay, this will appear at the top. So most of the time it'll be at the top here. Okay. So that's an important one to remember. So next, what we're going to look at is how to reveal more overall definition in your painting. Say you don't want it to look as textured. You want it to look a little bit, uh, you want to get closer to the original look of your image. So we have this layer here called increase overall detail. Now, if I slowly increase the opacity here, I'll just click, hold and drag on this word opacity here to the right to increase the opacity. As I increase it, you can kind of see a lot more detail coming into your painting where it's now creating a more of like a subtle um, overall painted effect. Whereas if I drag this back down to zero, you can see it's much more dramatic, uh, a bit more abstract. So if you want to just create more of a subtle painted effect, just increase this opacity and just drag it to a point that you're happy with that still has that sort of overall painted look and feel. You don't want to take it to 100% because then it starts to look a bit fake and pretty much um, too close to the original look of the image. You want to drag this down and get that. To, so some of the texture still come through. Um, and what you can also do is let's just say that uh, I just want to increase the the definition around this group of people here again. Okay, everywhere else can say can stay a bit more abstract, a bit messy. So what I'll do, I'll bring this back to zero, and I'm just going to look at this section here while I'm increasing the opacity. Just get into that. So maybe like that, I want I want it to look like that, but everywhere else, I want to take it back to the original look. So there's two things we can do here. Firstly, we can uh, flip this mask from white to black. So if you hit Control or Command I, that's going to flip it to black. So that is hiding this entire layer. Now, when we brush white, I can now brush over this area because this was the area that I wanted to increase the level of detail. So uh, this can be handy if you're running the action on portraits and you want, uh, say, the eyes, the nose, or the mouth to be um, less affected by sort of abstract textures and messiness of larger brush strokes, you can then use this layer to control um, the look of a particular area on the face. Uh, so yeah, there's that method. We also have this method here, uh, which is essentially the same layer. It's just a different way of thinking about it. You have reveal the original photo details. I've got a brackets here, brush mask. So what you can do with this one is just uh, hit B, That'll grab the brush tool. You can grab this mask brush get brush again. You don't have to use this mask brush. You can use really any other brush. This is just one that I created uh, that you can use. And if I start, say, brushing white now to reveal what's on this layer, you'll see as I'm brushing, it's revealing much more of the original look of the, of the image. So let's just say one of their faces to have a lot more definition here. I can brush around there. But maybe the contrast is too strong between it looking a bit too realistic almost a bit um, versus very textured and very abstract. So what you could do is start off by brushing on where you want more detail and then lower the opacity of this layer. So what that'll do, that'll start to remove um, what you've just done basically. So you can create a blend between this layer and what's sitting below it, which is that look. Okay, so yeah, experiment with that. Turn this one on, back on. She might turn this one off, keep it looking like that. Now the next folder we're gonna take a look at here is re reveal edge detail. So what you wanna do is go inside this folder here and this is the layer you want to interact with, reveal edge detail. So if you hold down shift and just click on this mask to disable it, okay, you can see, and then I'll just click on it again to re-enable it. So you can see while I'm doing that, if you look at the painting, what it does, it reveals the strongest edge details as basically just like black areas of paint. Now, this can be handy firstly for just generally increasing the level of, I guess, definition uh, in your photo. Uh, so in the image, but what you can also do, you can use it to can, you can just brush on areas where you want to have those extra um, 
those extra bits of detail. So if I hold down shift to say like mask again, I can take a look around and then I kind of like how it's added these, um, these sort of legs to the chairs down here. It's much more prominent than without it. So you can see that there. So maybe I just want to add that. So what I'll do, I'll select the mask, hit B, grab the brush, make sure white is active because I want to reveal this layer. Now when I start brushing, I can reveal those, those legs down the bottom here. Okay, so I'll turn the layer on and off now. You can see that. You don't want to do anything with this folder here. So if I hold down Alt or Option, and then click on that mask and view uh, what's going on here. So you don't want to brush anything onto this uh, mask here. You just want to play around with this lay here and the mask. All right, let's now take a look at these adjustment lays here in gray. Uh, I use these quite a bit, so um, they do affect the overall uh, painting quite dramatically. So you definitely want to play around with it. So these top three uh, lays here in gray highlight mid-tone and shadow brightness and contrast. So with these layers, you can kind of control the brightness and contrast of different tonal ranges in your painting. So let's just say you've, you've, you've got your painting and the whites are too white, you want to tone them down a bit. What you can do is just double click on this icon here. And then uh, I might just drag it out to the side so you can see this. Uh, now, if you just see brightness, you'll see that that is targeting the brightest values in your painting. So you can make it brighter or you can tone that right down. Okay. Now the same applies for, for the mid-tones. You can double click on this one and then adjust the mid-tones here. Okay. And then you've got the shadows. So you can boost the shadows. Uh, let's drag this back here. So you can see the shadows there. So sometimes you might run the action and the shadows are too dark. There's actually quite a lot of definitions in there. Uh, you might just want to boost that up a bit, okay? And again, you can use that technique of masking where let's just say that I want this area to be dark, this area to be lighter. I can boost this up, okay? Flip the mask and then brush white into that area that I wanted to be brighter. So now when I control this, I can specifically target that area. Okay. So let's just brush on actually more, uh, around here. Yeah. All right. So the next one here is overall brightness and contrast. So again, just double click here. I've set the contrast to negative uh, 50 for the default result. Uh, but you can definitely play around with adding more contrast. So you can see that there kind of, I guess adds a little bit more separation between the textures when you add more contrast. So just keep that in mind that I've set it to zero uh, to minus 50. This is another way to experiment with the contrast is if you just adjust the opacity here. So currently, currently it's set to zero. If I just drag opacity to the right here, that's a different style of contrast. And yeah, you can just play around with that one. Overall color vibrance, double click on this one. By default, I've increased the overall saturation of colors in your painting. So that's it by default. So if you've run the action and you're noticing that the everything looks a bit maybe too saturated, just, just remember that I've set this quite high to boost the colors up, okay? And you can, of course, increase it even more. You can grab this vibrant slider, drag that to the right, and the colors really start popping down. So I might just increase this a bit. All right, so that is those adjustment layers. You definitely want to jump into those and have a quick, quick fiddle with them because you might just like the, you might just prefer the result after adjusting the settings just a little bit. All right, the next action we're gonna take a look at is the Create Smooth Paint Stroke Result, this one here. So if you just click on the Actions panel button here, select this one, and we're just gonna click play on this one and I'll just let it play out and talk to you about what it is doing. So when it's finished, I've just got this sort of tips message, but I'll, um, I'll talk to you about what's going on here. So you just click stop on this and we'll hide the action file. So what this does, it creates two layers at the top here. We have smooth paint strokes and I've got a break here opacity. So I'll just turn this stop one off for the moment and it's set to 80%. Now, if I drag this opacity to zero, then 100, 
you can clearly see what that's doing. So if you want to smooth over your paint strokes, uh, use this action here, create smooth paint stroke result, and adjust the opacity of this orange layer here, and yeah, see if you prefer that result. And just to keep in mind that if you use this at 100%, uh, anything you do below this layer won't have any effect because what this layer is, this is actually a, it's a snapshot, okay? Uh, it is a snapshot of your original painting and then it's put onto one layer. And if you set the opacity to 100%, I've got the blend mode set to luminosity. So you can see that there, um, basically as you move layers around down the bottom here, it's gonna have no result. It'll offset the colors a bit, but um, yeah, you just wanna play around with the opacity here. And what this top layer does, smooth paint stroke texture, let's just, uh, let's just zoom in a bit here. If you, uh, if you, yeah, if you set your paint, your smooth paint stroke layer to a strong opacity, let's say 90%, you can bring back some texture in the paint strokes just by having this uh, layer enabled. You can see if I increase this, you can see texture coming through. So I'll bring this back to zero and then I'll start increasing it again. So by default, I think I have that set to 20%. So if you want, um, typically I kind of zoom out like this and then as I'm increasing the texture, I get it to a point where it's sort of noticeable. So right now I can start to see a nice bit of texture coming through and down here, maybe a little bit too strong. Um, now, a couple of other things I like to experiment with when using the smooth paint stroke action is sometimes I will grab one of these um, these brush stroke layers and I'll just make a copy and I'll drag it to the top, I'll drag it above the smooth paint stroke layer. So then that basically sits on top of, yeah, your smooth paint strokes and you create this blend between having um, some prominent um, paint strokes seen on top of like the smooth brush strokes. So that's a kind of a, a looking experiment with, and if I don't like it, I just hit Control Z to undo that, and maybe I'll grab another one. Small brush strokes, and I'll just drag that up. Okay, maybe I'll try, uh, try large brush strokes. So you get different results doing that as well. All right, next let's take a look at these remaining actions in here. So this one here, create random direction paint strokes. What this will do is basically create more of these layers in green here. So if you remember uh, the random direction strokes, if I drag this one to the top, you can see that uh, these are the paint strokes that sort of shoot off in all sorts of directions that can create uh, more, much more of an abstract look to your, to your painting. So if you want to create more of those layers, uh, because every time you run this action here, it will create this layer, but it will be, it'll be randomized every time. So the paint stroke uh, directions and arrangement will be different. So all you need to do is uh, select it, click play. And when you click play, you just get this sort of message asking that if at any, at any stage, if you get a, a pop-up message asking um, if you would like to replace the existing snapshot, just click yes. Okay, this won't always happen, but if it does, just click yes. So you just wanna click continue. And this action will take uh, a few moments. So I'll just quickly uh, fast forward to the result. All right, after the action's finished, you'll just get this message pop up, which where I'm just giving some few tips on how to use the layer. So you just click stop. And so what this action does, I'll uh, just hide this for a moment. It creates this one layer at the top here. So here are the random uh, brush strokes. And if you're not using the, the smooth paint stroke layers, I recommend just grabbing this and moving this below the paint stroke uh, definition layer so that um, a lot of like your texture definition work that you've been doing in here uh, that affects the paint stroke, the, the random direction strokes as well. Okay, so you can see if I put this back on top, so you can see the before and after there. So I recommend just putting that below, uh, but for a moment, let's just keep it on top here. Um, you could also try and move it up below the paint strokes, uh, the smooth paint strokes layer here, but if your opacity is set too high, you can see how it's not showing through. But if I decrease the as you can see those random paint strokes coming through. So yeah, we won't use this one for now, so I'll just delete that. And let's go back inside the actions panel and take a look at these last two actions. So if you just want to experiment with some overall um, contrast and color boosting, you can just select one of these layers here and click play. 
and this will just take a quick second and I've just got a message here just remind you to experiment by adjusting the opacity of the layer so just click stop here and it outputs this layer up the top here uh, color uh, so contrast and color boost again I've got a bank here opacity so if I drag this opacity to zero and I start to increase it you can see how uh, there's a lot more sort of contrast and, and uh, color coming into the painting so there's that one and then you can also experiment with a second one this is a slightly different style so you select that click play and give it a moment and that'll come on so yeah you can experiment with those two delete that okay so lastly what we're going to do here is we're going to use photoshop's camera raw filter to make some overall uh, color adjustments contrast sharpening uh, it's a tool that i like to use uh, all the time especially like when I've come to a point with a painting that I'm happy happy with um, I like to jump into there so that's under the filter menu camera raw filter what we're going to do here is what you, uh, you want to select the top visible layer and you want to hold down control shift alt e or command shift option e and what that's going to do that's going to put everything that you see on your canvas here onto one layer. So if I move this layer around now, you can see it's just one layer, okay? And then we're gonna apply some color and yeah, camera raw filter adjustments to this one layer. But what you might wanna do also is if you right click on the layer and convert this to a smart object, that just means that whatever we do in the camera raw filter, we can go back in and re-edit those settings. So with that layer selected, you can go to filter, camera raw filter, Give that a moment to load up and let me just fix this. All right, so here we are. Uh, I won't go through all these. I'll just give sort of a general overview of what's going on. So under the basic drop down here, uh, you can you know mess around with things like the temperature. Uh, if you're painting, you can adjust the tint. You can go in here with all these and fine tune. Uh, so you can target the highlights. You can drag that down. Uh, you can adjust the texture amount so if I drag it to the right you can see the texture increasing or decreasing and you've got the clarity so definitely play around with those uh, vibrance if you want to boost the color up some more okay uh, detail I'd like to jump to this one and usually just add like a little bit of overall sharpening uh, this one down the bottom here is interesting if you go into effects you can add some uh, vignetting down here, if you drag it to the right, that'll add sort of like a white vignette, but most of the time you're probably going to use black, so that kind of helps sort of narrow your focus more to around, more toward the center of your painting. So you can play around with that one. And another uh, area I like to jump in, into is uh, the browse profile section. So if you click on this icon here, you have a bunch of different uh, color options here. So let's just go into vintage. And if you just hover over these options here and look at your painting, you can see how it's, you can apply a different look. But generally, I don't like to apply the entire look. So what you can do is, let's just say, uh, let's just say I like this one, but I don't want to use it. I would like just a little bit of that effect, not all of it. So what you can do, you can just click on it. And when you click on it, you get the amount slider up here below. So you can then use the slider just to add a little bit of that color if you want. And then you can, you can continue to hover over other um, colors and let's just say I would like a bit of this one as well. I can click on this one and use the slider again to add a bit more of that one. So I sort of jump around through these. I jump into modern. So you can hover over these and see. So that one's, so this one's pretty cool. So I'll drag this to the left and maybe use a little bit of that. That's kind of cool what's doing to the color. Maybe we just use a little bit of that. Yeah, and yeah, I'm done with that. So then I can just click OK. Give that a moment and you can turn that layer on and off and you can see the before and after. And what I also like to do is sometimes uh, try adjusting the opacity of this layer um, so, so, so we can create more of a blend between what we had just um, done in the camera roll filter versus uh, beforehand so this result here we can create like a blend by adjusting the opacity all right now if you double click on the camera raw 
filter um, bit of text down the bottom here that will reopen the camera roll filter with the current with the settings that we had just applied so you can go back in here and like fine tune uh, anything that you want to now if you want to take your painting a step further and experiment with more uh, some more effects you can try Photoshop's uh, neural filters so if you go to the filter menu and uh, neural filters but what you want to do firstly is you, if you just applied the camera raw filter you can select this layer or you can just uh, hold down control shift alt e again or command shift option e create another uh, snapshot of all your layers which puts it on one layer here and you can go to filter uh, neural filters and inside here you want to turn on style transfer this one here and so this has a bunch of uh, different uh, yeah different effects and what you can do is if you just click on one and just give it a moment uh, it'll update your design with these added effects so you can see here uh, you can do things like preserve you can preserve the original color um, of your painting and to get a second and you can also adjust the opacity of that style so if it's too strong you can sort of knock back the opacity so you can see that creates um, a pretty cool effect actually it's 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 if i turn this off see if we can get it before and after oh no that sets it to 100 percent. so yeah definitely experiment with these uh there's a few of them so yeah you can do that i'll just cancel that for the moment Okay, let's take a look at the before and after. So I'll just grab the original image here, Control or Command J to duplicate it, and then to move this layer to the top, you hold down Control Shift Right Square Bracket or Command Shift Right Square Bracket. That'll bring it to the top. And so turn that on and off. You can see it's quite a dramatic difference there. All right, guys, that covers everything uh, with the action. Now, just a reminder that this is a free Photoshop action, so you can uh, just follow the link below to download it and try it out for yourself. Thanks.